Hi there, this is Ryan Schultz. Welcome to Metaverse Newscast, where we interview the personalities behind social VR, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. My guest today is Chris McBride, and he is the person who won the first Best Avatar contest that was held in High Fidelity a few months ago. When was that? Uh, it was October 6th. October 6th. And uh, with this wonderful Ganesha elephant avatar, the first question I have for you, Chris, is could you tell us a little bit about how you first got involved in social VR and virtual worlds? Yeah, I stumbled across um, Second Life back in 2004 or so, and I became really involved with it in 2005. And I was a big part of a, a lot of art collectives there. There was a, another collective called Ironworks that I was a big part of, and we put okay. on charity events. There's, so I, I've been, a, been enmeshed in the social VR since the early days, I think. What's your background? I, um, my education is in um, graphic design and and I um, also have some computer science, mechanical engineering, so I have a little bit okay. of everything. What was the most challenging problem that you had to overcome in making this oh, avatar? This is the first time I did anything with these flow phones. Okay. And to get that ride and get you the You mean skeleton. like your trunk and your ears? Yeah, and like the sash. And the sash, yes. It wasn't necessarily hard. It was just kind of you know doing that for the first time with high fidelity's infrastructure to see you know how it would work. But yeah, I was pleased. It's, it's very cool. So can you tell us a little bit about how you created this avatar? What software tools did you did you use? I um I model and a UV map everything in a piece of software called Moto. Okay. And um, then I texture everything in Substance Painter. Any of the details, like a, what you would call like normal map baking, I do in ZBrush and then reproject that back out in Substance Painter. And then I assemble everything in Maya and rig it, weight paint, all the facial animation. Okay. So I use, uh, four pieces of software. Oh, wow. Okay. So how long did it take for you to make this from start to finish? Uh, from a cube to finished, ready to wear. This is a solid week and a half, almost two weeks. Okay. How did you feel when you won the best avatar contest? I was excited. Yeah, it was very cool. I'm I'm usually an introverted, shy kind of person. And so that kind of attention is a little, a little much, but I enjoyed it. Met some cool people, got some, some neat business contacts. So definitely, it was definitely worth the time and blood, sweat, and tears put into it. Did you get some uh, avatar creation business out of that? I did. I did. <laughs> I was it. just going to ask you, um, how many controllers are you wearing right now? I've got one on each foot, one on my waist, one on each shoulder, plus the headset and the two wands. Because the tracking is just amazing. That's something that I really like about High Fidelity. It already supports extra controllers, which the other platforms that I visit often don't yet. Yeah, there's, so there's it, a, yeah, it really adds to the realism of your avatar. Well, there's a lot of other options that I haven't even tried yet. You know, like elite motion controller, things you can do on your desktop. With you know, right. there's a lot of different options, I, I believe. And I've seen people do some crazy stuff with MIDI controllers. There's really cool MIDI support in High Fidelity that you can like do real time things and change, you know, parameters of just about anything you can build. Anything, anything you can think up, and you are proficient in JavaScript, you can pretty much do here. So the, uh, you must be an active part of the creator community here on High Fidelity. What are some of the things you most appreciate? I, just the the breadth of seeing somebody's imagination come to life, how yes. they s see themselves, how yes. they see the world. You know, and it's just super cool to not, not everybody looks the same. You know, not everybody has their own way of expressing themselves and I, I really <laughs> I, I, you know for better or worse however you want to look at it <laughs> yeah well I, as i said before in an earlier interview i kind of have the custom standard matthew avatar that right. i decided a wizard had to i do need to have somebody make up a custom avatar for me because i don't have the skill set but someday so how do you like the high fidelity platform i really enjoy it i i I was a big fan of Philip Rosedale and what he did with Second Life during yes, his tenure there. And, um, you know, I've tried several other ones. This one, hands down, is my favorite because of the open source nature of it. Right. And, um, you know, it runs on multiple platforms and the ability to host your domain, you know, wherever you see fit. And how, you know, and I, I see a big, the, also the number of avatars you can have in one space here is really amazing and i think it'll just get better and better and better as time goes on 
What kinds of things do you see happening on the High Fidelity platform to make it easier to create and customize avatars in the next little while? Well, I think the 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 ability that they've added with these flow bones or these simulation right. bones is going to add a lot of uniqueness to the platform. Also, I mean, the skeleton and everything that makes this work isn't horribly complex and it's very flexible. You know, I've designed things that for... You know, people that were shorter than me, taller than me, have different proportions, and the skeletal structure will snap, you know, to fit those, you know, because I'm in full tracking. Chris, I wanted to ask you, this domain that we're doing the interview in, you created this, right? I did, I did. What's it called? I just call it Ozone because, you know, it's a bunch of O's. <laughs> oh, okay, I just my, got that. My, All my, right. My I love it. And oh we're God. kind of slowly rotating on this platform through well, all the, these Tauruses. Well, the, the platforms are actually still, but it's the spheres around and that kind of tell you where you, know, you are. If you notice, they're all numbers, and the numbers correspond with the teleporter ball. So wherever, whichever one you squeeze, you teleport to that, okay. that, that part. But my goal with this, I wanted to um, see how smooth the physics would be on a, one of these hosted digital ocean domains. And I've been extremely pleased. Like, see, I can, like, pick up something and, and drag it to me. Oh, wow. And see, I could, like, actually, I might hit you in the head. Just say it. But see, you can pick this stuff up and grip it and then throw it. And oh, so wow. you can just come in here and toss stuff around. And it's everything's, you know, physics enabled. Anything that's colorful, anything gray is like a static object. But you can, like, teleport, oh, wow. climb on stuff. I mean, it's... Oh, this is so cool. It's like just a, like a big playground. I didn't realize all these were dynamic and you can throw them around. Yeah, all all the kind of gray and silver ones that are, those are static and things will bounce off of them. You can go walk on them. I mean, if you're afraid of heights, this is not a place to come to. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's fun to fly around and just kind of, you kind of sit on something and slide off of it and fall to the next thing. And it's just, you know, just kind of for me to kind of see how everything works and just a big play space. Eventually. Great. and underneath see if you look behind you like that, that platform number three with a red light on it right under underneath all these i kind of want to as things evolve have like little apartments that are like little teardrops in a chandelier shape so you can have your own space with your own zone so like you go into the little space and everything's quiet and you can have a conversation have your friends over and, and have this like be a community you know Ooh. and people who can just live here but that'd that's, be lovely you know, that's that would be lovely road. I like the way the red wave moves when you talk. Yeah, it's way too many polygons. Way too many polygons. It should be way lighter than that. But yeah, this is one of my first things I ever built here. I mean, I've built meshes and stuff for Second Life, but the flexibility of what you can do here is just night and day. Okay, pose and turn. <laughs> Gorgeous. Uh, Gorgeous. That was great. That was fantastic. I hope you got that, Andrew. You try another one? Okay, let's go try another one. All right. This one's my normal self. <laughs> A blue alien is your normal self. I, love I know. It. I even had one that looked very similar to this in Second Life towards the end. What does the symbol on your, on your uh, tank top mean? It's a uh, Om. It's kind of like the the hindu sanskrit symbol for like okay. the beginning okay. sound of the universe basically okay if you, if you can tell i kind of have some eastern hindu uh influence. philosophical leanings yeah <laughs> i'd really like to um when i have times kind of make some other like uh historical deities and if i could hook up with somebody who knew how to script and like make some of the gods that have multiple arms and things like that so when oh, i that move it, so cool. i know that that's beyond my abilities with the scripting part of it but man i would love to learn how to do that okay make love to the camera <laughs> cool now this is my default personality this is kind of what i'm most comfortable in the one i you know kind of wear for my day-to-day -day vr self Ooh. So graceful. <laughs> trackers on? Uh -huh. Where do you Are put your working? trackers? I've got them on my feet, waist, shoulders, and then the wands and the headset. Do you use an Oculus Rift or HTC Vive? Yeah, I use a Vive. Okay. 
Was it was it difficult making that avatar it, since it was? Uh, this is actually the second incarnation of this design. This one's definitely a lot smoother, higher res, but the textures are more optimized. It loads faster, smaller, smaller file sizes, a little bit different facial animation. But I do when I when I construct things, I have like a. It really helps if I have a photo of the person or myself, for that matter, in a T pose. So that way I can see exactly where their joints are. And so when I construct the skeleton and rig the mesh to it, it moves more naturally, especially if they have trackers on. If, okay. you, wear, if you wear trackers, it's super important to get the arm length correct, like from the shoulder to the tip of the fingers. So that way that your shoulders and your arms move correctly and don't fold up, you know, kind of like a chicken. Yeah, okay. So... Uh, this is a custom avatar that you're making for somebody right now. It's not finished yet, I understand. What's the process if somebody wants to contact you to get a custom avatar made? They can um, contact me at chris at ultranique.com. You can also visit ultranique.com and kind of get an idea of who I am and the kind of things that I do. I need to put some more avatars up there, but you can definitely get an idea of my history. There's a lot of photos of Second Life and other design projects, so you can kind of you know, tell who you're dealing with. But one of the most important things is that I get some measurements from you. So I can know exactly where to put the bones and um, you know, construct the skeleton in a way that matches your body. So I definitely look at myself more as a boutique kind of, um, you know, one-off creator. I'm okay. not necessarily in a mass market kind of way. I like to get to know okay. people, see what they're looking for and go from there. All right, thank you. Okay, pose and turn. <laughs> My balance is not that good. <laughs> That's fine. Do another slow turn, Chris. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time to talk to me today, Chris. It's been a pleasure chatting with you about your avatars and about this domain. Thank you. Thank you. As always, I'm Ryan Schultz, and this is the Metaverse Newscast. Bye. <laughs> I celebrated with um, the prize money and bought one of the wireless adapters for my Vive so I don't have any cables anymore. So that way you can, like, whee. <laughs> you don't have to worry about tripping over anything. So that, that was that was kind of my goal. It's like, if I win, I'm going to go wireless. So, yeah, that was, it was it was a good thing. But, yeah, it was it was nice to be acknowledged for that, you know. And I, like all of us, I mean, I think I learn new stuff every time I make something new. So, you know, what I learned from that one, I'll take to the next one and the next one, you know, so – it's just it's just something I truly enjoy. I mean, it's something I really am passionate about doing. Don't be afraid to experiment. You know, I think a lot of the rules here kind of evolve and are very fluid about what you can and cannot do. There's a lot of undocumented things. So just try it. Try, you know, try exporting it with certain settings. If that doesn't work, try something else. You know, that's how I learned. That's how I figured out how to make stuff work. I, I really like the the open flexibility of what you can build here. As long as you can get an FBX file in here with some textures, you can pretty much make anything you want. And I think as they add um, good support for GLTF based textures and meshes, it can be completely open source without relying on any proprietary code. I would like there to be options to enable or disable certain features i get that there's a, a wide array of people that use social you know vr including high fidelity if i want to go run and jump off a cliff and fall all the way i would love to be able to turn that on i would like to be able to like you know change some of the smoothing options about how my trackers work there's just a lot of places just little tweaks that if you can enable or disable a few things or add a slider to you know enable some Variability, I think that would really help satisfy a lot of people because, you know, maybe start off with a default simple implementation, just like you can go turn on the developer menu, turn on an advanced options menu and mess it up as much as you want to. <laughs> I think as they, they add shader support so that you're not limited to just the materials and you can actually do programmable shaders, I think that will be a big addition. I think the fact that the original concept about how everybody that is logged into hi-fi 
can have the option to contribute resources to the experience, their computer horsepower, bandwidth, et cetera. I don't think that's necessarily in use at the moment, but the the groundwork for that's there. And I think is, you know, we go to a 5G wireless connections and everything gets faster. The mobile devices we have get faster. It will all be a great experience for everybody because the resources will be a shared thing and it smooths it out for everybody. At least that's my understanding of, you know, the original intent of what the sandbox is capable of doing. Outside of one update, it has been the smoothest experience I've ever had with a hosted service of any kind like this. The ability to manage it through your high fidelity account, go to your do cloud domains, one click update, and it's on the newest version and you're ready to go. The ability to like do a restart, it's fast, it's clean, and it's always on. And I think it's affordable for, for the reliability and smoothness that I've noticed on the, like I'm pay, I personally, this one's a $15 a month tier. I think you can have between six or eight avatars here before it bogs down i've seen it as many as 10 and it not be a problem when you start throwing you know physical physical objects and stuff around it might slow down a little bit but other than that it, it works really really good I, I highly recommend it to look at something i did a year ago and look at something i did now and go oh my god i never thought i'd be able to do something like that <laughs> i think that's probably my greatest joy to, to like to see your own personal evolution and see you know, creating your own way of doing things, the way that you want this to work and the way you enjoy making things, as long as it fits the constraints and doesn't slow everybody else down, you know, and you're responsible with your polygon count and texture, you know, textures that you choose, you know, do whatever you want, you know, and I really, I like that flexibility to experiment and just play. I would tell the VR chat people that you can have more than 30 to 35 people in world at the same time. The sense of community and having a crowd of people is really something that that's amazing to experience. Um, the people in Sansar, I would tell you have the freedom to do whatever you want. You have a blockchain based market system. You have the ability to recompile the software, however you want to use it and you're not locked into dealing with just one entity, which I really appreciate. It's the difference between basically a chat room with shoes, which Judas here has stated very eloquently, and actually being in front of somebody. The, the sense of presence when you're able to walk up and actually look somebody in the eye, and, and the more trackers they have on, the more motion, the more you can read somebody's body language, it's a much more immersive, personal, bi-directional experience in Second Life. A lot of times I felt like Second Life is I'm looking through a window into something. This is you're on the other side of the window inside it. Or why don't you turn around? Slowly. Oh, you mean him. Sorry. Are you filming this already? Let's try Chris turning around and so we don't have to see Ryan's ass. I'm sorry, I'm blonde. It comes naturally. Ryan, how many lines of work do you get to say that? <laughs> don't. How many what? Uh, turn on your flow. Yeah, please turn on. How, how many yeah. lines of work do you get to say that? I have that? just given up on the ironies of, of being in virtual world. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've seen it all. Nothing surprises me anymore. Oh, yeah. If you've been in Second Life for any amount of time, you have seen it all. There's I've been in Second funky, Life for 11 years. I have seen it stuff. all. <laughs> uh, I was probably a part of some of that. <laughs> but probably. Not, not yeah. some of the, like that restrained life stuff. I'm like, dude, that's just beyond me. <laughs> I know. That's like, <laughs> hello? Know. What is this? <laughs> Teeth their own. You know? <laughs> Temple of the Collar? What the hell is this? Uh, anyway, yeah. Um,